Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to a very sleepy The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks. I'm sleepy for a good reason. I, I got like a uh, 10 hour shift at work, and then uh, my mom, who's been miserable, so all of you praying, thank you so much. She's been herself, and I visited her. It's now 6.30 in the morning, and it's time to do a Correct Views, and then it's time to go to bed. Um, this is from PrisonPlanet.com. How a country dies. Um, this seemed like the most prudent thing I'd seen in a very long time. It's from the Economic Noise blog. Prison Planet had posted it. A country dies slowly, it says. Those living during the decline of Rome were likely unaware that anything was happening. The decline took over a couple hundred of years. Anyone living during the decline only saw a small part of what was happening and likely never noticed that anything was out of the ordinary. Countries do not genetic, gen, genetically determine life, do not have genetically determined lifespans, I should say. Nor do they die quickly unless the cataclysm of some great war does them in. So how do they die? Well, let's look at, uh, it dies slowly at first. We have the economy. Oops. It's buffering. It's internet is terrible. Economically, people become poorer. Sound familiar? It becomes harder to feed a family. Economic growth stalls and then reverses. Work opportunities decline. Disincentives to work raise as government tries to ease the burden on the unemployed and lower skilled, in other words, welfare. These efforts require more revenues, which means higher taxes or debt financing. Disincentives to create jobs are magnified by attempts to address the problem. So basically, they give money away to help the poor people, overtaxing the people still working, and at some point, one number ends up uh, going over the other. Those being helped outnumber the people helping because of outsourcing, for one thing, at least in this day and age. It says the response should not be surprising <clears throat> when work becomes less attractive. Capital flees first. That is money for you Lady Gaga fans. It goes to areas where adequate returns are still available. Jobs are created, but not in the host country, which should be illegal. Finally, a brain drain begins. Talented people leave the country for places with greater opportunity. In the case of the U.S., to escape U.S. taxes, these people must renounce citizenship, and it should be noted, citizenship renouncements are currently at the highest levels in history. So, of course, the flight of capital, the depreciation of good jobs, we're seeing this in places like Detroit. Uh, let's look at the next thing that happens, the state, number two. The state is threatened by a decline. <clears throat> Generally, it moves into full pretend mode. Three behavioral traits characterize its behavior. The state must convince citizens that things are not as bad as they seem. In other words, you're just imagining and everybody else is doing great. Look how good the stock market's doing. The state is not responsible for the situation. In other words, government didn't cause it. We could have never seen it. Even though everybody predicted that this crash was going to happen, <clears throat> we never knew. The state must do more, which means grow bigger, in order to solve the problems. Well, let the government take more control of your life, and well, we can solve this. Sound familiar? Statistics issued by the state are fudged to convey false image of well-being. Government spending soars in an effort to juice reported economic activity. Much of the spending is unproductive in terms of providing things that would have otherwise been bought. It is also counterproductive to a proper functioning economy as price discovery is disrupted and consumer and investment decisions are based on false signals. In other words, <clears throat> they lure you into investing in the system, knowing full well that the system is already broken, but they want to make it look good, and then finally it creates a massive crash. It says incentives are provided to encourage people to live beyond their means, like credit cards. Debt appears nearly free. In other words, it's not going to be that bad. It's just a little bit of money you're borrowing and readily available. Bubbles occur and then burst. New bubbles are necessary to replace the old bubbles. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, they'll make one sector look great. And then when everybody, uh, everybody invests in that and it crashes, they make something else look great and get you to invest in that if you have anything left. 
Um, this is a really good article, actually. Um, it mentions bread and circuses. As Rome was dying, it said all anybody cared about was bread and circuses. Um, and, in, and then basically entertainment. And then it increases to divert people's attention from the developing problems. Dependency increases, reflecting an attempt to placate the masses. In other words, just watch Beyonce and pretend that she can really sing. Everything is fine. Three, <clears throat> society becomes coarse in this progress as it progresses, in this process as it progresses. I was going to say, what an awful sentence. People increasingly are unable to provide properly for their families. Some desperately turn to unethical behavior, even criminal acts. Common decency declines. I know what this is like. I used to work for the greediest man that ever lived, Fred Nero, uh, Yellow Cab. And I was basically a prostitute procurer and a drug procurer. Because if I didn't do those things, I couldn't feed my wife and I. So it happens. It happens to people that don't want to do it. The regulations imposed from above reduce the sphere of voluntary interactions between people. The government decides more and more what you must do, when and how you must do it. What you can say comes under attack. Finally, how you must live is increasingly determined. And that, again, let's remember the, the whole pitting of races against each other, with, which happens all the time. And it says, are the people aware? The United States, the once beacon of freedom and wealth, shows advanced deterioration in all three of these areas above. The rate of deterioration is accelerating, I agree. And to paraphrase Ernest Hemingway, uh, response to a bankruptcy question, how did your country die? Two ways, gradually, then suddenly. So, I would say that most of the people that I know have no idea what's going on around us. I mean, absolutely none at all. But the results from a recent Gallup poll are interesting because we are seeing uh, more and more dissatisfaction, uh, particularly from small businesses, the military, police, and churches. <sighs> Friends, the time to act is now, plain and simple. Uh, I thought this was definitely worthy to cover because it brings everything to a point for us. It, it points out that you're not crazy when you see these things happening that CNN is telling you that everything is okay. The facts are actually on the side. Uh, and he, you know, again, Gallup amazingly even pointed this out. It said numerous observations could be made regarding many of the institutions. All have decreased in favorability. Uh, Congress has a 7% approval rating. So people know that something is wrong but they're too busy with the bread and circuses to actually try to fix it go look at the article for the rest it, it's a very very good and important read zero hedge iraq update air force run, runs out of missiles isis controls the border shiite clerics threaten u.s troops uh many of you already know this uh, the reason i want to mention this is they said something in here that struck me as just insane and I want to find the exact quote here because this lets you know y y people get under the impression that I'm going to type in the keyword so I can find it real quick. People like to go ahead and think that maybe the worst of this is behind them and that, you know, we're, we're dealing with these really stable states now. We've done so much for Iraq and Afghanistan that everything is going to go great for them now. Okay, let me. Th does three helicopters sound like it would, uh, like it would bring an entire uh, military down to its knees to you? Because if it doesn't, then you're not following the news. Because that's actually exactly what happened. Um, it says Iraq is in danger of losing everything due to the destruction of three helicopters. America has gone to Iraq. We have sacrificed our men and women for this sentence to become a reality. ISIS now, uh, of course, is. ISIS has damaged 28 tanks and shot down three helicopters. A significant percentage of the government force a significant percentage of the government force is 28 tanks and three helicopters? 
That's that's the Iraqi force? What would they beat with? Rubber bands? That's a country that's ready to be on its own. You can take 28 tanks, shoot down three helicopters, and stop the entire military. I read that, friends, and I couldn't even believe it. Of course, since that article was written, things have gotten much worse there. But I had to admit, you can't overstress that. Take out 28 tanks and three helicopters and you have destroyed the entire force of the Iraqi army. I'm speechless. Friends, I got RIA, Navasti, Russia, China ready to cooperate in space and explore Mars. Russia's done good things in space. I don't really have a lot of faith in China. I imagine China's probably going to be riding uh, the space on the coattails of the Russians. But it's interesting as a news from the science front update. Uh, for those of you that do like those updates, I do them at the Media Speaks every Saturday at 2 p.m. live. Russia is ready to work with China to explore the moon and Mars, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rosgan said Monday. What's amazing to me is Russia, China, and the United States, none of them have managed to read enough scientific journals to know that life in the universe can most likely, uh, life in the solar system, can most likely be, be found on the moons of Saturn or the clouds of Venus. Venus is too hot for most life as we know it in terms of uh, intelligent life, but the conditions are perfect for bacterial life in the clouds. So where do we go? We go to the dead red planet. Now Russia and China want to go there. If we talk about manned space flights and exploration of outer space as well as joint exploration of the solar system, primarily it is the moon and Mars because people are idiots. We are ready to go forth with our Chinese friends hand in hand to the dead red planet and the dead moon. Rogazin said during a round table held within the framework of the first Russia-China Expo, you know what, I would rather if we mine the moon, which is the direction they're going to go in, um, I'd rather we just did it ourselves. I mean, I don't really agree with Newt Gingrich on that much, but I agree with him on this. Let's just mine the moon our damn selves. Why do we need the Chinese and the Russians? We really don't. Let them go to the moon and let them stay there. Deputy Prime Minister reminded that Russia is currently pursuing a comprehensive reform of the space industry trying to catch up with the technological progress. This is accompanied by accident risks, so we cannot simply watch these developments unconcerned and the deep reforms that today should lead to the colonization of the Russian aerospace industry are bound to yield the desired result very soon, Rogozin stated. So basically, China and Russia are going to go sprinting merrily into the moon and Mars. Hopefully somebody in our country will be smart enough to look at the clouds of Venus, because if there is some kind of bacterial life there, I must say, it's, uh, it's going to be one of the most significant, um, it would be the, maybe the most significant find we've ever discovered. Why were everybody's on a rush to the dead red planet? I have no idea, but hopefully we will be able to revive our own industry ourselves. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find his artwork. Yeah, his artwork. I'm tired, friends. You can find his stories, which is also artwork. How's that? You can find it, Mike McLaughlin, Facebook. Let him know you want to read his short stories. You want to read his uh, poetry. He sells them. And it's your chance to not only help the show by going there, but to get some really, really good writing and to be able to enjoy one of the better writers extant today. If you like that, do me a favor. Also, go to Amazon. Look up uh, Risen, The Lucky Leprechaun, and A Sleep Unknowing. Those have all been written by me. Uh, two of them are fiction, and one is a persuasive essay proving the resurrection of Christ without using the Bible to do it. All right, guys, a few more to get to. This is, uh, I had to cover this. The dogma of drug prohibition. Neither your life nor your death belongs to you. This story made me, I was, I could kick a kitten through a house fan. I was just livid when I read this because this shows you why the persnickety rules that we have and the over-regularization of everything actually has real world, real people implications here. By William Noren, Information Liberation. 
Benton McKenzie is suffering from terminal angiosarcoma, an aggressive variety of cancer that has left his body modded with grotesque lesions. In the hope of enjoying what remains of his life, the 40-year, 48, he's really young, 48-year-old Iowa resident has grown marijuana in order to distill cannabis oil to treat his condition. Let me pause, and if you think the cannabis oil is uh, some new age mumbo jumbo BS. Go to themediaspeaks.com and look at the most amazing interview I may have ever done. Guys, I've interviewed the Throw Pill Cult. I've interviewed everybody you can possibly think of. Members of Metallica. Uh, I've interviewed the uh, vice presidential candidate, Jim Gray. I've interviewed a lot of people. Look up themediaspeaks.com hemp oil girl. girl. She's amazing. She, she has cured her brain tumor with hemp oil. And she talks about it at great length. She's a, a bubbly, vivacious, very friendly, unbelievably positive person. You, and uh, safe by hemp oil, that's my point. When this became known that he was growing it, known to the local prohibition Soviet, police raided his home, that is to say us, stole 71 marijuana plants and arrested McKenzie and his wife on drug conspiracy charges. Yesterday, as McKenzie was scheduled to testify in Vershinskite farce called his trial, he was incapacitated by pain and hallucinations, which happens with cancer, which is why he was trying to beat it, and had to be rushed to the hospital. This development will not deter or delay the f functionaries in charge of the proceedings who insist that they will wrap things up by Friday. District Court Judge Scum Henry Latham and Assistant Scum Scott County District Attorney Patrick Mayalia have conspired, when there's no other word suitable, to suppress any mention of McKenzie's condition because you can only use uh, marijuana for intraceable epilepsy. Or I guess that's intractable or epilepsy. So basically, cancer isn't a good enough reason. You can't even mention that he wasn't distributing it. You, can, you can't mention that he was sick. That is a rigged court. That's what the Nazis were known for. It is not an exaggeration to say that those officials are doing everything they can to extract the last full measure of agony from a desperate, dying, and helpless man who has done no injury to anybody. In their casual depravity and general sadism can be seen in the true nature of the entity that is called the state, that is to say government. Mr. McKenzie is going to die, and his prosecutors want to ensure that he will die as a convicted criminal for the supposed offense of claiming ownership of his own life and doing what little he could to enjoy what remains of it. His wife's son, parents, and childhood friend are likewise facing conspiracy charges for the crime of rendering compassionate care in a fashion not authorized by the state, like it's any of their damn business. So guys, how can you help? Well, you can call uh, Judge Henry Latham and uh, Assistant Scott County District Attorney Patrick McAlia, a M C A L Y E A and ask them why they're harassing this man. Oh, but Sam, marijuana, uh, 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 it's bad. KRQE.com, Gary Johnson, former governor. I interviewed his vice presidential candidate. He was wonderful towards me. Gary Johnson named pot company CEO. Now, do you think a politician is going to take and back something that they know is going to destroy their career. Absolutely not. Even libertarians, they, they, they have a, a common sense to them. This is a very smart man who knows where the science is. Albuquerque That's why I voted for the man for president. Somebody accused me the other day of voting for Romney. I almost threw up. Gary Johnson, who I voted for, has already had a number of interesting roles in his lifetime. He's been New Mexico's governor, a presidential candidate, and headed a successful construction company, and climbed Mount Everest, I might add, with a broken leg. Tuesday, he was announced as the head of Nevada-based Cannabis Sativa, Inc. I'm excited about this, and I think this is really a change the world kind of thing, Johnson said. Now Johnson, a longtime advocate of legalizing marijuana, will look to make money off it, though not necessarily immediately. 
I'm getting paid $1 a year to be the president and CEO of this company, but I am getting stock so that the only way I make money is if the shareholders make money, Johnson said. See why I voted for him? One of the company's prime products is a marijuana lozenge or cough drop. Something Johnson hopes will catch on as an alternative to smoking. I have a real aversion to smoking marijuana. I think most people have an aversion to smoking, period, Johnson said. And I agree. Uh, Christel smokes Misty's. And literally, my stomach turns to smell of them. Um, most cigarettes don't get me like that. I'm not one of these anti-smoking Nazis. I don't think it should be illegal. I just think it's stupid. But, oh my God, the smell. Well, a lot of people will claim that us potheads, not that I would be one, reek. You guys smell like smoke. That's why I don't like weed. I've tried the product, and my reaction is, number one, why would anybody ever smoke marijuana given this is the alternative? I actually agree. I probably uh, would quit smoking if those hit the uh, market. Not that I know anything about smoking now. Um, and to be honest, uh, I've been questioned about it. Yes, I do. I'm going to admit it. I smoke. Um, I was going to run for public office. What if you run for public office? If I run for public office, I will obey the laws that are there that I will largely try to change. But yeah, I would stop. For those of you that really want to know. Um, Johnson touted the medical benefits of the company's products. Cannabis oil is thought to be effective in helping treat children with epilepsy. The big key to the firm's long-term success will be pushing marijuana legalization nationwide, something Johnson thinks is inevitable, given the laws in Colorado and Washington. Yeah, because Colorado's become one of the destination vacation spots of the country. Guys, two more stories to get to. A leak at Fukushima nuclear plant threatens dangerous meltdown. This is why I ask all of you, and I'm so grateful for you, who come to see the Fukushima massive update once a month, and I do it once a month that uh, you want to subscribe because I do a lot of Fukushima quite often and today is going to be one of those times because this is really bad, friends. Internet is so slow, so give me like 97 years to scroll down to it. Foxnews.com. And they nailed this one. Trouble is looming at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant as a leak has forced the shutdown of a cooling system that could cause temperatures to exceed dangerous levels. Fukushima operator Tokyo Electric Power Company, that is General Electric, that is who you never want to invest in because they knew about this and did it anyway and built the plant there and ignored all the warnings, pour your money out of anything GE related, was forced to switch off the cooling system at Reactor Unit 5 after engineers discovered that it had been leaking water. Five, by the way, is not one of the ones that melted down. That's why this is really big news. If the system is not repaired within the next nine days, temperatures are expected to soar, RT said Sunday. Uh, for those of you new to this, this is a, uh, an event that could wipe out habitability of the entire northern hemisphere if this were to go bad. More than 340 gallons of water leaked from the cooling system intended to stabilize the temperature of the spent fuel reactor at Unit 5. The system was offline, but loaded with fuel rods, which is death, when the plant was damaged by an earthquake and subsequent, subsequent tsunami in March of 2011. That accident caused three of the plant's six nuclear reactors to melt down, which was the earthquake that caused much of it, releasing extensive amounts of radioactive material. It was the largest nuclear accident since Russia's Chernobyl in 86. It was actually bigger than that, and it's ongoing still. It hasn't... Uh, it hasn't dwarfed any. More than 300... Oh, I read that. The source of the leak was apparently a 3 millimeter diameter hole near the flow valve at TEPCO statement released Sunday said. When the cooling system was turned off around noon Sunday, the temperature in the pool that holds the rods was about 73 degrees Fahrenheit, but started increasing by 0.193 degrees per hour, TEPCO says. If no new cold water is pumped in at this site, it will reach dangerous threshold, that is meltdown, of 149 degrees Fahrenheit in roughly a week. Such temperatures would increase the possibility of dangerous reactions. No, it would cause more of a dangerous reaction than they already have. Of course, TEPCO is saying they have no uh, unusual levels, but 
what's an abnormal level when you're dealing with a, a quadruple meltdown, melt throughs, and then melt out, where the core is actually on the streets of Tokyo in the form of black sludge. It's bad. It says high temperatures may have not been routinely seen at the plant since the cooling system failed in the immediate aftermath of 2011. You know, where they had no business building a power plant where they did. Uh, it mentions that the use of seawater could have very likely caused much of the deterioration of these parts. So now we're not just looking at the uh, first four units at the plant, including uh, four that wants to fall over as so much as a firecracker hits it, but now we've got, uh, we've got unit five looking to melt down. Yeah. Pray that it doesn't, friends. That's all you can say. Pray that it doesn't. Takes us into the dumdy of the day if I can get it to come up, because now it doesn't want to. I do want to say this as I recall it up. This Fukushima mess is not going to be something that you can just fix. Like, everybody's saying there's got to be some repair for this. There's got to be some way to fix this. That's like saying there's got to be some way to enclose space. It, 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 there's no... It, that sentence doesn't make any sense. It's not something that can be... It's not something that can be done. Um, Five-year-old committed for sexual misconduct for pulling his pants down. Yes, that's true. You heard that right. A five-year-old committed sexual misconduct for pulling his pants down on the school property. That is a sign of where we are. We, we live in a, and I, again, I, I don't really, I, I don't think everything should be outlawed. I, do I look like the kind of guy that's approved? Obviously not. I, I've done things that would make the devil blush. The point here isn't what should be legal and what shouldn't. It's that zero tolerance ends up putting things like a sexual misconduct report on a five-year-old. And depending on how that's read by who and when, that kind of thing could stick with him for his entire life. And we're seeing this at schools with guns. We're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing it over and over again with the way that we're treating our kids like criminals for doing things that kids are supposed to do, simply as a matter of growing up. But suddenly, out of nowhere, now it's all zero tolerance. This zero tolerance that. And what you end up with very rapidly is a a police state, a police state that threatens everything. Even, even small children with ever deteriorating records for doing what? For doing absolutely nothing whatsoever. Pulling your pants down on the playground as a five-year-old student. Right here, CBS. Friends, if we allow this kinds of thing to go on, then we can't wonder why we have trifling, easily provoked and angered children. You just you can't. You can't make this stuff up. You can't wonder how children end up messed up when we when we give them such over regularization that it's not even funny. Do I think you should have been given a sticker and a piece of candy for it? No. But you can over punish someone here. I mean, we're not the Taliban, at least I don't think so. Surprise Arizona, a mother is upset after her five year old son received detention for what the school is calling sexual misconduct. Eric Lopez, a kindergartner at Ashton Ranch Elementary School, pulled his pants down on the playground this past spring. Uh, the child received detention and has a note with on his permanent file. This will go down on your permanent record. Any violent femme fans? Any? The child received detention and his permanent record black marked. At the time of the incident, his mother wasn't notified, nor did school officials inform her that her son signed a note in the assistant principal's office. So, yeah, why should the parents be there? He did not know that he could ask for me, his mother told uh, KTVK5. He's five years old. Dysert Unified School District. So, if you want to complain, that's why I do the Daily Dumdy, call the Dysert Unified School District, who has a policy that states a parent does not have to be present for a disciplinary meeting unless the student requests his or her parent. I'm sure they let them know, like good Nazis. For the past two months, Martinez has been fighting to have the sexual misconduct label removed from her son's files, citing that her son's actions were not sexual in any way. But the district has denied her appeal, and the assistant superintendent is defending the school's actions. 
Who is that? That would be Jim Dean, who you want to call and tell him how stupid he is at the Dysart Unified School District. Our school district uses consistent language for disciplinary infractions in order to provide clarity and track discipline data accurately, said the jerk Jim Dean. So friends, I've told you where to complain. I've told you how outrageous it is. Use this information. I work very hard on these. Look, tired eyes, very, very, very tired eyes. 10 hours of work, two hours visiting my mom, hours setting up this show, Use this information. Make my work worth something. Call these idiots. Call them out. Let them know that we're not going to take it anymore. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie signing off. Do me a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Um, if you'd like to donate to the show, you can do so at TheCorrectViews at Hotmail.com. All money that you give to me goes towards a better show. And uh, it's what I want to give you. I want to give you a better show, friends. I also want to give myself some sleep. So good night. God bless.